Well, this lady kindly sent me this lovely uh, PDF with loads of questions on it, and she's done a lot of research about her uh, insulating her loft, saying that she can't find the information that she wants. And she states uh, uh, up here um, some of the problems that she's got at the moment and how she's thinking of getting over them and gives some really great details down here. And I just, it was so good, I just wanted to go through it. So, you, you know, anybody can read this as we go along, but basically here she shows on this picture here her loft and the air leakage that's coming through into the loft. She shows the insulation in this picture that they threw out because it had shrunk and it wasn't too good. She, sh she sh shows the loft hatch entrance and how that was leaking lots of air in and she's losing energy and another hole here. So that's really what she's showing there. Now she's gone off and she's done some research and she's come up with this which she thinks is a great and it is. I, 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 this is really great. I don't totally agree with it but it's really great. Um, so if we go over this, what's happening here, this is the loft and bear in mind that in this picture here, she shows us her loft and we can see there's a pitch up here with some kind of tiles on top of it. And we're also looking at the back of the sarking felt here. And that doesn't look like it's a new sarking felt. It looks like it's a non-breathable sarking felt. We come down and we look at this picture here. Now, first of all, these, th these plastic, uh, um, uh, trays that are here are absolutely great for continuing ventilation moving up from any eaves vents which is on the outside you can put your insulation in between your joists push it up tight against these but you'll never close the movement of ventilation and there's the key to how this would work with movement over the top with movement over the top of all the insulation that was in there um, we can we can bring in some more insulation on this roof which i'll do in a second but that's what we want to achieve movement up over the top and out the other side or out the top of of the roof but over the top of the insulation but i've got to disagree with this drawing um they're not saying what insulation that insulation they're not saying what insulation they're using here but look this blue vapor control layer and an airtight layer going across the top they're turning this into a complete sealed system yes if you have got a vapor control layer where this bluey purpley color is right away through yes you could put an airtight layer on the top and your insulation in between it and you would theoretically trap all of your rising moisture below now here's the thing that a lot of people are missing with this and that is and there's a great article it came from the 1970s i've got um but i don't know who wrote it and it says when is a vapor barrier not a vapor barrier and the answer is when there's another one around so if you've put in insulation that has got a foil face to it just remember that can act as a vapor barrier and vapor barriers are vapor barriers not vapor stops so therefore they're only controlling they used to be called a control layer the amount of moisture that they are stopping they're controlling it and i shouldn't use the word stopping they are controlling the amount of moisture that's getting up through the vapor barrier which is correctly here on the warm side of the insulation so if you're putting insulation in with a foil on it be careful, especially if you're crossing it like this, because you could stop the vapor that does get through at a different level and could cause problems. And it confuses things. Now, personally, I wouldn't go anywhere near this, especially because you've got this vented space above. Why would you go to the expense of putting all of this down when you could leave it open? You could use a whole load of um, uh, um, open insulation, uh, uh, you, you, there's loads on there there's fiberglass insulation there's rock wall you can use loads of it and you could build it up to two three hundred millimeters high and you could let the vapor permeate through the plasterboard ceilings without having to worry about putting a vapor barrier in because it would permeate through all that lovely open fluffy stuff right up into the space above which would be vented up here it would be vented because you've got venting all the way around here and you'd also have venting at high level you'd put some high level venting in and that vapor could just blow out and that way you're, you're actually getting it out of the house rather than locking it in to cause mischief elsewhere let it out 
air open is the way to go not air closed whenever you can surely the way to go is air open because if you keep going air closed sooner or later inside the building you are then going to have to control the moisture content which is inside the building so she she brings up this uh, this particular drawing and and um, she talks about it whether or not she should go there and again you can read what she's talking about over here which is really great but she comes up with this particular option and again, she's talking about taking the ceilings down um, or put, to put a vapour barrier in and or doing this way. And she's talking about crisscrossing the insulation because of um, stopping the, this movement of moisture through. Remember, the vapour barrier is controlling the amount. You might get a minimum amount go through it, but over a few years, could that build up? Now, the thing is with that in the past, if you don't crisscross your insulation, if you're going to use an insulation that is foil faced or is a PIR and you've got gaps in it, like so where it butts together, you are definitely better to crisscross all your joints, stagger all your joints, because any moisture that gets through this will move up the side now you've pushed it all the moisture that's getting through the area here is going I can't go up because I've got another vapor barrier so it's all getting pushed to the joists either side then there's lots of examples of this especially coming through from America where this happens and this is where when we're stripping roofs we're seeing it all the time the problem with this moisture migrating up it's getting pushed to the timbers and we're always seeing the rot across the top of timbers or across the top of joints like so, never really in the middle of the insulation because it's coming up and it's going, okay, I've got to go this way, I've got to go up there. And of course there's more of it because it's all getting for forced to these weak areas. So she talks about this and she talks about putting the different layers on and building them all up. She does great, this is, you know, superb and a drawing of, of a concept of um, cond condensation accumulating um, in these particular areas and of course it may not end up as cond uh, interstitial condensation in those areas if you've got more insulation over the top and you haven't got cold spots where it's it's changing its state it's going from a gas to a liquid that might not happen but my whole point about showing all of this is going back up to this point here why would you do all of that you've got this loft space, you can let the moisture out by making sure you've got that great amount of ventilation above it. So she's done an awful lot more uh, in the respect of trying to work out uh, different ways of doing this. Uh, another example that she's giving here is to, to use a PIR uh, foil face at this level and open insulation here to let it up. I mean, this is a great idea, but why would you put all the vapor barriers in and why would you use PIR here? Just put more insulation above and open and have it all come out. Now, she goes over to talk about this uh, video that Roger uh, has done here, which I just quickly went and had a look at. And he talks about leaving an air gap, putting insulation in between, like she's showing here, leaving an air gap here so that you can have you can catch the radiating um, heat in that air gap and force it back down again to keep it. Now, I've got to sort of disagree with that. I, I can't really understand how that's going to work. I mean, two things, keep it simple. My whole here, what I'm trying to do is keep the whole thing simple. Uh, Roger's talking about leaving an air gap there. Well, how are you going to stop this from dropping back down? And uh, it's going to be very difficult to get it in there in the first place, tie it, seal it around the edges and to leave an air gap at the bottom. But realistically, the, the foil is to stop the radiant heat um, all, all foil insulation is the foil is there as part of the build-up of the insulation and as part of um, um, moving the radiant heat back down into the building now it's doing that anyhow regardless of whether you've got an air gap there it's going to be pushing it back down um, I can't see that you're going to be gaining much there um, I, I mean I've never really come across that before but I think overthinking making it too complicated so there's the air pocket that Roger's talking about up there whether or not that's a good idea I can't really comment but I just think keep things simple um, I really wouldn't go there with that um, and, and most of all air tightness is what you're looking at if we come back up to the top here and we look at this loft if she 
completely makes this airtight. We, we know that a good airtight ceiling actually becomes quite a good vapor barrier in the first place. So sealing the loft hatch, sealing all these areas, and you've already installed a pretty good air vapor control layer by, by doing so. Then everything above it wants to be air open and that's why we use rock wall or any of the other fiberglass it fluffy insulation you can loads use loads of it make sure you don't block up your vents around the edges make sure that if you've got a non-breathable and i must clarify that actually i've just used the wrong term it's not a non-breathable these these are the new air vents which the new sarking felts that we're seeing put in um, are all um, gas permeable they don't allow the movement of air and they still need a lot of ventilation however they will let out gases um, so increase ventilation all the way around the bases and at the top and at the sides the more ventilation you've got going over the top of it the better to allow all that build up of moisture that's coming through out and you then haven't trapped it inside your house but this is really nice of this lady to send it through hopefully it's answered uh, the question because she did ask me what i would do um and speak soon <laughs>